the Eldar. Enigmatic, immortal, and utterly alien. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make Eldar terrain out of a few simple items that you can get at your local dollar store. Hey guys, welcome back to Eric's Hobby Workshop. Today's episode is a challenging one. The Eldar are known for the distinctive clean lines and organic, alien-looking structures that they use. To get the Eldar look right, we're going to have to turn back to some of the visionary minds who designed the look of the Eldar in the first place. I'm speaking, of course, of Jess Goodwin and John Blanche. Let's take a look at this piece by John Blanche first. So the first thing I notice about this piece Apart from the fact that, of course, it is not about the buildings, this drawing is about the character in the forefront of the image, but the first thing that I notice are these gleaming white towers, and that is definitely something that I want to include in this build. The Eldar are an ancient and highly civilized race, and thematically, a gleaming white tower that's high above everything else really ties in that sort of concept, so that's definitely something I'm going to keep. Form-wise, the towers have radial symmetry, which is to say they're symmetrical around the center point, and they're embellished with some little bumps and details here and there, and then they have these reaching arms of wraith bone that connect them to each other. Now, wraith bone is what the Eldar primarily use as a construction material, and it's a pretty cool idea. Wraith bone is essentially psychic energy made manifest. The Eldar are tremendously powerful psychers, and they can use that psychic energy to craft basically whatever their imagination can give them. Which is one of the reasons why their buildings look so organic and interesting, is their sort of thoughts and dreams made real. Which I think is a really cool concept. But so we see these stylistic curving elements that are kind of organic, and you can see down here at the bottom as well, there's a bit of a causeway sort of feeling, and I think we can incorporate those into the build as well. All right, now let's take a look at the one by Jess Goodwin. This one has much more of a focus on the architecture itself. And as you can see, there are some similarities with John Blanche's work, but there's also some refinement of the ideas because we get a closer look at these buildings as well. And one of the things that I noticed right away is stylistically there are these oval jewel pieces all around it decorating it. And that's definitely something we can do. Now these rounded oval shapes are something you see on Eldar miniatures as well. So another thing that this drawing does that I really like is it includes some figures in the context of the building so you can get a sense for how the Eldar use this building. And um, the sense that I'm getting from this is that they stand on the balconies and uh, look into space contemplating things beyond my mere mortal mind which is perfectly okay. I like that actually. So we'll go with that. So cool, now that we have some ideas, let's get to the sketch pad and start cracking away. So the first thing I do is sketch out the shapes. This allows me to see what works, what doesn't, what patterns and shapes and overall silhouettes might work for this project. And it is just a really good way to test designs without having to move any pieces around yet. And with that done, I head to my local dollar store. Look at all this beautiful plastic stuff. I'll take one of these, that'll be nice. Little bowling pin, sure. Army men, let's do it. Eggs, foam, funnel, and these little scoops. Hmm. Okay, let's get that stuff home and start looking at the shapes and how they relate to each other and how they might go well together. This, as you can see, is a very imprecise sort of process. I'm holding up my hands, I'm holding up a miniature. I'm trying to get a sense of what kind of building I want to see. Once I have a bit of an idea, I'm going to take some XPS insulation foam, the stuff you can find at Home Depot or something like that. And, uh, oh, that's no good. Look at that. It doesn't really stick flat because there's this like shock absorber. So let's cut that off with a craft knife. Nice. All right, so we'll cut a little piece of insulation that'll act as essentially a wraith bone type thing that connects two different shapes. Cut that out with a knife. Yeah, good enough. Put a little Dark Reaper on there. Yeah, it's the right size, perfect. And then I draw some smooth shapes to try to make this more of an organic looking structure. It's cut quite roughly at this stage, but that's not important because we'll fix that later with a variety of methods and you'll see what I mean. I hack into that just to make sure the edges work. 
Then I cut a little bevel with a nice sharp knife. All the plastic pieces are going to get a nice sanding to make sure they take the paint well. That's a really, really important step. Stuff like this Vuvuzela especially, this weird waxy plastic, if you've ever touched one of these, it almost feels oily to the touch even if you wash it. So it's important to sand it. Sanding the foam is really important too to get that nice smooth, almost organic wraith bone type look. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for. There's a few little pits and grooves, but we'll fill that with a little bit of spackle. Just rub it on there. If you enjoy the content that I make on this channel, I'd love to have you as a supporter on Patreon. As a creator, there's no better feeling than having a community of people who feel that your work is worth supporting. And there are some benefits as well. You can get your name in the credits, you can join my Discord server, see behind the scenes photos, and share work in progress photos with each other. We're building a little bit of a community over there, so it's pretty fun, and I'd love to have you on board. Next, I'm gonna use these little scoops. I'm gonna make sort of a viewing gallery shape with these. Trace that out on a piece of paper, get this little ping pong paddle shape, and then cut that out on a piece of foam core. And that's going to be the bottom sort of floor. Next, I'm going to make sort of an Eldar... I don't know what else to call this, but like an Eldar shape. It's like this weird, like, shark fin type thing. I really have no idea what to call this, guys. I got low blood sugar. It's late at night right now. And so it's a shark fin. It's an Eldar shark fin. As you can see, I'm buffing that sanding it, beveling it, cutting out a little walkway here with a little hole in the center. And that's all gonna come together a little something like this. It's a little bit imprecise trying to get these things to match. It takes a lot of eyeballing, a lot of rough work here. Considering how clean and smooth I'm trying to get this structure, it's a pretty imprecise process. Here I'm sanding these scoop deals for the same reason as before. Helps the paint adhere, gets a little bit more surface area for paint to stick to. And as you can see, these pitted surfaces really take the spackle well. Here is a golden egg. It's also gonna get sanded. Buff that right back. Beautiful. I'll take some newspapers, lay them down in the garage, and then take most of my plastic pieces and hit them with a nice spray paint that has a primer built in. This is going to help me to not only visualize the structure a little bit more because the pink and bright greens can be distracting, but it's also going to help things stick together a little bit more. I'm using some Gorilla Glue construction adhesive here, gluing my floor on, and then I'm going to draw a careful bead with this Gorilla Glue and add the scoop pieces to make this sort of viewing deck, sci-fi sort of command center type area. This piece is kind of a interesting shape. I've never really seen a structure like this before, but I think it suits the Eldar quite nicely. It has these nice smooth curves. As you can see, I'm using a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to clean up that construction adhesive and try to get as clean as I can on this project. With the Eldar, it's best to be as clean and precise as possible, which is easier said than done sometimes. There's a lot of areas on this project that were a little bit rougher than I would have liked, but you know, sometimes it's better to make things good enough and uh, have a nice piece that you're pretty happy with rather than beating your head against the wall chasing absolute perfection. So here I have one of those Easter eggs. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure out a line that circumnavigates it and then start gluing some of these googly eyes on. Now these googly eyes are super important stylistically to get that Eldar look because Eldar models are covered with these little oval protrusions and these googly eyes are going to manage that at a terrain scale for me. Here you can see my super precise method of making things fit together. I eyeball it, I cut it sloppily, and I call it good enough. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm cutting out a base out of MDF board, and I'm using a knife like an absolute maniac. This is definitely the worst way to cut MDF board. This stuff's super thick, super hard, and, uh, but you make do with the tools you got, right? Add some construction adhesive, bring some of these pieces together. It's very strange trying to build something so tight and organic looking improvisationally. And there's a lot of problems that come up as I did it, but uh, that's all part of the fun. You just gotta make do and improvise as you go. 
as you can see here I'm making a big block of foam that I'm going to try to make in the, the back half of this viewing deck sort of structure and that was kind of just an improvisational process of hacking away at the foam seeing how it fit against the different jar shapes and things that I've been working with sanding measuring checking seeing if it fits Cutting a little bit more away, sanding a little bit more down, checking again to see if it fits. Very, very sort of experimental process on this one. And this is not really a lot of techniques here that I've done before, but I'm pretty happy with it. Here you can see me smoothing on some spackle into the join where some of these shapes meet together. And this is really just trying to unify these shapes and make them more of a cohesive, smooth, organic structure. A little bit of wetness on the fingers allows you to get a much smoother appearance on the spackle. There you can see I've glued this egg to the top. I ended up changing that later, but that's neither here nor there. And here I'm gluing some pieces of scrap foam to the inside of this lid, because that'll give me a larger surface area to glue this on top of my inverted carafe that's forming the main structure. When I glue that on, you can see you get this weird little lippy bit. I'm not happy with that the way the threading is showing, so I take some of this EPA foam and I wrap that around there. Next you can see I've made a sort of support out of foam core. And I just eyeball it, seeing if it'll match the curve. Just kind of trial and error wise. No real precision here guys. I mean, precision is not exactly my specialty and I think it kind of shows on this project. but. With a little bit of eyeballing, a little bit of faith, a little bit of spackle to cover the joints, you get a pretty good result. Here I'm gluing some more googly eyes on as a little bit more detail. And I'm really trying to create shapes and designs that remind me of the Eldar style, which can be easier said than done. Here, for the inside of the structure, I've drawn a design on a piece of paper and then tracing it with a very sharp X-Acto knife, I'm able to, to translate that to the EPA foam. And that acts as sort of an interior doorway there to give the room a bit more of a functional appearance. I glue a piece of paper in behind it for a nice smooth back, and then I glue that EVA foam right in on there, and that gives it sort of the appearance of uh, command center. There's not too much detail in there, and maybe I'll revisit that in the future, but the scope of this project just kept growing. I originally intended to make a small piece, and as you can see this thing has gotten quite large. And Right now I'm putting gesso on it, which is going to give it a nice sort of matte finish that seals things together and unifies textures and unifies surfaces, and it's really gratifying to see this happen because it starts to look like a real Eldar structure. It's especially gratifying to see these googly eyes get painted over and become these little featureless bumps, which some of which will become jewels and some of which will not. Seeing it like this makes me really excited to do the last few steps. But first, let's have a look at today's sponsor, the Easy Roller Dice Company. The Easy Roller Dice Company offers a huge variety of top-of-the-line dice and tabletop accessories. They've got D6 for wargamers, dice sets for your RPG players, but my personal favorite are these metal dice. They just have such a nice heft to them. When you put these in the bag, it feels like you're carrying a bag of treasure. Easy Roller also sent me some bags, cups, and trays to try out. I particularly like this collapsible tray because of how portable it is. All of the trays have a nice velvet interior, and I like this ridge around the outside where you can keep your dice to keep them off the playing surface. So treat yourself to some easy roller dice. Follow the link in the description box and use the promo code HOBBY20 to get 20% off your first order. Thanks easy roller. Now let's get back to the project. So let's add a little bevel to the base. Already I'm pretty happy with the shape of this structure. It has almost a little bit of a retro Jetsons y vibe to it. You can see I'm sanding the edges here, trying to sand some areas, make things a little bit smoother, a little bit more unified. 
I could have gone a bit farther with the sanding, but guys, it's hard to understate how much time this took as is, filling all these little gaps, doing all these things, scratching my head and staring at this thing and getting frustrated, so it didn't end up perfect, but I think I've never actually learned more on an individual project than I have on this one. Just all these different techniques and tricks and traps that I fell into. You can see I'm trying to make a door here, but I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know which direction to go with it. Um, so what I ended up doing was making sort of an Eldar rune type thing. Eldar have these distinctive glyphs. Now this is kind of the equivalent of, I guess, getting like a, an Asian tattoo and you don't know what it means and it could mean like fool or something like that, but you think it means dragon. Um, so I just kind of made up these symbols and uh, hopefully it doesn't mean anything bad and to those of you who know the Eldar language, if such a thing is even and it fleshed out enough to be its own language, but uh, I kind of went for the same vibe in terms of the shapes that I see the symbols made out of. So here's another piece of wraith bone made from a scrap piece of thin XPS foam, and I sand that smooth, or smooth enough, put it into place to support this platform, and I'm using other scraps of foam to create some rocky outcroppings on the base. I kind of wanted the impression that the Eldar have such advanced construction techniques that they don't have to clear away boulders. It's sort of things just spring up in this context of the land. And here I'm putting a little bit of sand, that good old sand. I glued my biggest googly eye, unfortunately not too many of these in the package, onto that shark shape. And then another nice glyph piece onto this tower here. I think I'm most pleased with this one. This one just has kind of a, kind of a sim, almost like a ceremonial look to it. It's kind of hard to describe what I mean by that, but uh, it makes this whole building look like it has a bit more of a magical function once it's tied in there with the rest of the structure with some gesso. And here I started using these military helicopters, thinking that I would be able to get some shape that I liked the look of. I figured I could make the top of the tower with two of them together like this and then use this bowling pin. And so that's what I did. You know, I peeled off the sticker, chopped that up, and I glued these things on to essentially the top. And, you know, I was kind of liking this. Spray painted it white. And you know what? Those still just look so much like helicopters. They, they look like helicopters. I'm not going to use that. But you gotta, you gotta try it. You gotta try it to know, right? You, you don't know until you try it. So here I'm gonna come in with a little burnt umber paint and lay down the base color for the soil that's gonna be underneath my structure. Come back in with a dustier brown, dry brush that, just add a little bit of variation and to pick out some of those details and raised edges. For these areas that I've gessoed, that are rocks, I come in with a dark black wash. That just stains them to a light gray because the surface is nice and porous. Next I come in with a little bit of brown paint mixed with some glue. Mostly I did this on the palette, but here I'm doing it on the model for some reason. And then I spread that around with a moistened brush and sprinkle on some static grass and some flock. I eventually came up with the pattern of this muddy glue mixture, then this clump foliage, then some flock, then some static grass. This gives a nice varied look that I'm pretty happy with. To do the jewels, I start by putting out a gradient of color on a wet palette from dark red all the way up to yellow. And what I do is I paint the gem black first just for a nice deep color to go for. And then I slowly highlight up into the corner with from dark colors to light colors and put a little dot of white up in the corner. And you get sort of a jewel like that. Since there's tons to do, I didn't spend too much time on it. I did add another balcony, just with this circle of foam core, gluing on some of these pieces underneath to act as supports. They're all basically cut from the same template to make them somewhat similar. And then I added some mud to try to smooth the transitions between the pieces. I brushed on some gesso to give it a nice smooth finish. I painted it white. There it is. Just kind of put that on the top there. I didn't glue it down so it'd be easier to store. And then my final piece on the top like that. And just like that, we're done. 
Alright, it's time for my favorite part. The shots at the end that showcase the build. I'm pretty stoked with how this turned out, guys. I was a little intimidated to try Eldar Terrain, but I'm really happy I did. I want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons. My Master Crafter level patrons, Robert Reisholt, Joseph Hobbs, Stephen Scott, Paypig69, Nadia Hamdi, Mike Huey, PFK Painting, Huge shout out to all of my patrons for all their continued support. I really appreciate you guys. My newest patrons are Speckled Jim, Micah Gonzalez, Vaughn Rogers, and Gordon Curry. If you guys want to see your name in the credits here, head on over to my Patreon, which I'll link in the description below. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.